high school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello again and welcome to Overtime. I'm Scott Lubbard. And I'm David Greenberg. The basketball season is winding down. This is our final show of this season. Got just a few teams still going strong, including one that's about to play for a state championship. That's the Winnebago girls. We're going to get to them in a bit. Plus, we'll have our Nick Chan boys and girls Elite Eight picks, which is our top eight players. Let's get started, though, with one very big basketball game that played out tonight in Marengo at the Class 2A sectional there. Rockford Christian and Rockford Lutheran took the court. These two teams, they know each other pretty well. Yeah, they met twice during the regular season. Lutheran won both games big, but the Royal Lions have made a lot of improvement in recent weeks. Now, never mind the high price of gas. The fan bases of these two schools were making the trip to Marengo. They were not about to miss this one. A great turnout by both schools. And a big first half for Rockford Christian. That's Elijah Daugherty on the drive. Then Caden McGall going to slip free underneath and check out the reverse lay-in by Caden. Daugherty's going to come right, right back with another drive here. And RC led by nine at halftime. But the Crusaders never get rattled because they are battle-tested. They came out and scored the first nine points of the third quarter. Evan Brogy getting it done there. Then Walter Hill Jr. shows his all-state moves. Lutheran tied the game up. Christian Cummings, though, going to make a great feed here to Ike Johnson for two of his 16 points. Now, a big and one coming up here by Donovan Sales. Yeah, he knows that's big. He was pumped. Hill was dynamite as usual. Again, driving, drawing the contact. Yes, Hill scored 22 points. Lutheran wins 56 to 47. The Crusaders are sectional champions. Their experience paid off in that second half. They really punched us in the first half. And uh, our message was, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down fighting because we just, they were playing harder. They were getting every 50-50 ball. They crushing us on the glass. So that was the message is, is we don't have to change how we play. X's and O's wise, we got to play with more heart. Boy, did they show that in the second half. Well, at halftime, Coach was yelling at us in the locker room, so we just had to come out and play uh, like we, we like used to play. So It's a great rivalry. You know, every time we come out here, the energy is something different, and uh, look forward to playing them every time. So now it's on to the 2A Sterling Super Sectional for the Crusaders. They will face Rockridge High School Monday night at 7 o'clock with a trip to state on the line. Go to the 4A Huntley sectional now from De DeKalb took on Elgin Larkin in the second quarter. Jamari and Studs knocks down a three from the top of the key. And after a DeKalb miss here, Damari Wheeler Thomas in transition. Layup's no good, but Dontrell Maxey is there for the putback. The Elgin Larkin Royals led by 11 at halftime. Go late in the game now. The Barbs did their best to come back. Lane McVickers hitting the three. And Tyler Westberg did his best to get open. He does and drains a three from the corner. And then another from that same corner. That's a seriously quick trigger there from Westberg. By the end, this one was pretty much out of hand. Head coach Mike Reynolds calling a timeout to give his seniors one final emotional ovation. But that was it. Larkin dominated, ending the Cal season with the 70-56 to loss. It has been a packed house every night at Pecatonica this week for the 1A sectional, and it was the same story tonight. Scales Mound took on Sterling Newman. In the first quarter, Newman's Nolan Britt decides to shoot it from the wing. It paid off. That's three for the Comets. The other way now, Zayden Ellsworth inside misses the layup, but Ben Werner is right there for the putback for the Hornets. Sterling Newman's ball next. Nolan Britt again going to find Marcus Williams. What a big game he had the other night. Big again tonight. The backdoor cut and hoop. The Hornets then will dish it out to Benjamin Vandigo. Behind the arc, drains it from downtown. On the following Newman possession, it's Britt again trying to get something to go, but it's taken away by Colin Fossler, who goes the other way for the and one. Scales Mound picks up the sectional title 62-49. to The Hornets will head to the NIU Super Sectional Monday night to play Chicago Marshall. And the Winnebago girls will be taking the court in normal tomorrow for the biggest game of their lives. They'll be playing for a state championship. We'll look ahead of that and look back at Bago's strong performance yesterday in the semis when we come back. You're watching Overtime. Winnebago fans have made multiple trips to the state tournaments over the years to cheer on their boys and girls teams. The boys have finished in the top four at state four times. Winnebago girls teams have made three trips to state, but never has a Winnebago team won a state championship in basketball. 
That could change tomorrow when Bago takes the court in the Class 2A championship game. They got there by winning their semifinal matchup against Fieldcrest Thursday afternoon. It was a game of two completely different halves. In the first, things were great. Here, Annika Bielski's knocks down a three, and then a little bit later, adds another. Bago was up 34 to 12 at the break, and then in the second half, Fieldcrest left it all out there. They brought it to within four points, less than a minute to go. And Campbell Schrank was the savior yesterday, scoring 18 points as Bago held strong, winning 51 to 47. We played to the very end of the buzzer, and I think that it just feels so good that we get a chance to play for the state championship since we haven't got to in a while. And this is one of our goals that we wanted to accomplish and end the season on a good note. We'll be ready for it. I'm glad, as they said, I'm, we get a day off here. Um, that really will help, and we'll go from there. So it all comes down to this for Winnebago. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, they will play Quincy Notre Dame. Winnebago was ranked number one in the state in Class 2A in the last state rankings. Quincy Notre Dame was ranked number three. I will be there, and we'll have it covered for you tomorrow night on the news. Well, it's that time of year when individual awards are passed out. Wednesday, the Associated Press All-State girls teams were revealed. We had one girl from the Rockford area earn first team All-State honors. That player was Winnebago senior Mia Brown. Brown averaged almost 17 points per game. She averaged almost eight rebounds a game, and she added four steals per game. She, of course, led Bago to the state tournament and so far to the state finals. This is the second straight year that Brown has made first team All-State. Sycamore's Faith Fierbach there made second team All-State for Class 3A. Fierbach is also a senior. She averaged 16 points and four rebounds and two and a half steals per game. Fierbach led Sycamore to 32 wins and a super sectional appearance. Fierbach had lots of help at Sycamore. Two of her senior teammates received All-State honorable mention in Class 3A, Evan Carrier and Ella Shipley. And in Class 2A, Brown's Winnebago teammate Renee Rittmeyer received All-State Honorable Mention. In Class 1A, Galena's Gracie Furlong was named First Team All-State. Galena's Addie Heffel received Honorable Mention. And boys Olivia Dingus also received Honorable Mention, and so did Stockton's Bryn Haas. In Class 4A, only one local lady earned All-State recognition. Hananigas Haley Warren received Honorable Mention. Coming up next, we hand out our own awards. Our Elite Eight players from the Nick 10 for the girls and the boys. Postseason awards are going out, all conference picks and all state picks. So right now we're going to give you some of our thoughts on the best players in the Nick 10. It's our Elite Eight. Both of us have come up with our own list. And when you're talking a 10-team conference and we're only picking eight players, that's a hard task. Some really good players obviously are not going to make our list, but we didn't want this to be easy. So let's start with the girls. And from our Elite Eight list, let's start with our big three. I'm going to start off with Boylan sophomore center Lily Esparza. She is that rare, true post player in the Nick 10. Her length makes her an effective defender. She has great footwork and moves on offense and a real nice shooting touch. And she runs the floor extremely well. The next member of my big three is Auburn senior Brooklyn Gray. She's that rare player who can play any position from point guard to center. She handles the ball well, has great vision, which makes her an outstanding passer. And she can get to the rim almost any time she wants to. The third member of my big three is Hananiga's senior point guard Carly LeMay. She really elevated her game this season. She's a terrific point guard, aggressive, hard nose, handles the ball well, pushes the tempo and attacks the basket and can knock down perimeter shots. All right, David, give us your big three of your Elite Eight. All right, uh, Scott, we agree on a few here. Brooklyn Gray, she's my MVP for the conference. She is and has been the heart and soul of that Auburn team and their leader for the last four years. Like you said, her position knows no limits on the court. She can play one through five. I also had Hananiga's Carly LeMay. She's a more true point guard who has total command over the Lady Indians offense and is a major reason they were able to reach that 30 win mark this season, especially when she hit that half court buzzer beater to defeat Guilford earlier this season. And for LeMay, it also helps when you have an absolute sniper like Haley Warren, who is next on my list. She's got a loud personality and is as sharp of a shooter as you will find in the conference. Head coach Jason Brunke sure had an abundance of riches with this senior class. So we agreed on two players in our big three, Brooklyn Gray and Carly LeMay. I had a spars in my big three. You had Haley Warren, and hey, that's fine. We have a difference of opinion. I'm sure we're going to have a few more. Yeah, well, hey, we having fun yet? Yeah. All right, let's keep this going. What do you say? Let's continue with the rest of our Elite Eight picks. Here are my remaining five players in no particular order. Jefferson senior point guard Carly Colson. She flew under the radar because Jefferson didn't win a lot of games, but Colson is a player, a great ball handler, 
She can break down full court presses. She takes the ball strong to the glass and she is extremely competitive. She will do very well next season at Rock Valley College. Belvedere North senior Crystal Sotelo makes my Elite Eight. She's an excellent scorer, but above that, she has a really good head for the game. She knows how to play. She's solid in every aspect. No major weaknesses with her. And a 5'9", Sotelo has good size. Next, I have Guilford Post player Lindsay Knuth. She's gritty. She's not afraid to play physical inside. She's strong, but she also has some finesse to her offensive game. Knuth's a good rebounder and a defensive presence inside, and I like Knuth's competitive nature. Now I have one of David's big three here, Hananiga senior Haley Warren. If you need a three-point basket, she's probably your girl, but Warren can also take the ball to the hoop, runs the floor well, can handle the ball, and I love the energy that she brings to the court and to the bench. Also making my Elite Eight is Guilford Jr. Sydney Donaldson. She can light it up in a hurry on the offensive end. She's an excellent three-point shooter from the wing. She's not only accurate, but she has a quick release, and if you crowd her, she'll put the ball on the floor and go around you. Good speed, quick hands, that helps her defensively. All right, David, you're up. All right, I'm going to start with the rest of my Elite Eight with Scott, one of your big three, Boylan Center, Lily Esparza. Like you said, she's got great skills around the basket and great footwork in the paint, which helps create open shots for one of her teammates. Someone we'll get to in a second. But before we get to her, I also have Sydney Donaldson like you, Scott. She is another one of those post players who can stretch the floor with her ability to shoot and handle the basketball. She put up some big numbers during conference games this season. And now we get to the player who benefits from Esparza's post game. It's the Lady Titans point guard, Olivia Harder. She has great ball skills, very competitive, and she is not afraid to take the big shot when her team needs it. And a lot of the time, it goes in. Next on my list is Crystal, Crystal Sotelo from Belvedere North as well. Caught a few of their games this season, and every time I did, she made plays. She's physical and tough. And I think those same traits shine through when North played the top teams in the conference. They were a difficult matchup for anybody. Another one we have the same is Jefferson's Carly Colson, who rounds out my list for the girls. Her passion for the game shines through on the court, and her ability to draw defenders in with the drive and then dish out is one of her strengths. That is an impressive list we just put out there. There are a lot of good players, though, we didn't name. Like I said, it's not easy to narrow a 10-team conference down to an Elite Eight list of players. These are our opinions. You're welcome to yours. Absolutely. And mom and dads, we know your daughters are number one on your list. That's the way it should be. Move on to the boys now, or should we just stop? What do you say, Scott? No way. We are going to go for it. The boys are up next. You've seen our Elite Eight players for the girls. Now let's continue with the guys. All right, I'll start this one off. My big three, I'm going with Auburn senior guard Rob Chaney. He's my MVP. It was a tight one between him and my next player, but Rob gets the nod because he was the leader on the conference champion night squad. He can do everything, run the point, dribble drive, spot up, defend, shoot from downtown, and is oftentimes the player coach Ott turns to late in a tight ball game, and you won't find a better person than Rob. Like I said, it was a close one between Chaney and Owen Hart from Hanega. When you talk about a high motor, this kid is propelled by a jet engine. There is no quit in his game. He's a fierce competitor, hates to lose, tough as nails, and is a fantastic point guard in all aspects of the game. Rounding out my top three is Joey Apino. For a very long time, the Nick 10, they know what they're getting when an Apino takes the floor, and Joey continues that family tradition. He's an extremely high IQ player whose role seems to adapt from game to game depending on the opponent. He can run the point, create his own shot, find the open man, and he's extremely physical. Scott, who do you have at the top of your list? My big three includes one of your guys, Hananiga point guard Owen Hart. If you just look at Owen physically during warm-ups, you think, okay, this guy's nothing to fear because he's not a big guy. But then the game starts, a switch flips, and he just takes over. Owen's such a great ball handler, breaking down backcourt presses, and in the half-court offense, gets the ball to his bigs in good spots. Owen's a terrific three-point shooter, and he has ice in his veins right here, you see. He's made so many game-winning shots and buzzer-beater shots. Auburn sophomore center Mike Jones makes my big three. There are a lot of great guards and forwards in the Nick Tam, but Jones is a rare big body who plays even bigger than his 6'6 frame because of his long arms and leaping ability. He was a matchup nightmare for most Nick 10 teams. He's a rim protector and a rim rattler with his dunks. I like bigs who are athletic and can play great defense. And the beauty of Jones is he's still going to get a lot better. The third member of my big three is East Junior forward Matthew Hoard. This is another guy who's not even close to reaching his ceiling. He is 6'5 and handles the ball really well. 
He's a slasher going to the rim, an excellent scorer, and his length makes him an effective defender. And he's one of those guys who in the Nick 10 could play any of the five positions and do it well. All right, so we have some differences in our big three. The one guy we agreed upon is Owen Hart. I had Chaney and Apino as my other two. You had Jones and Hart. Yeah, a lot of it comes down to who stood out in the games that you saw this season and I saw. And, and it comes down to really personal taste and what we look for in players. All right, let's continue with the rest of our Elite Eight picks. All right, I'm going to start with the guy you just left off with in your big three. East forward Matthew Horde. I couldn't agree more when you say he hasn't come close to reaching his full potential. The growth he made from last year to this year has been extremely impressive, and I can't wait to see the steps he'll take this offseason and to see what he can do next year. Next on my list is Adrian Agee from Auburn. As an upperclassman on a relatively young Auburn squad, he was a guy with a lot of game experience. He's a great three-point shooter and is a great athlete and strong defender. When the Knights were rolling offensively, number zero was probably a reason for that. Next, I've got Boylan sophomore guard Tristan Forb. This kid is another one of those with a very bright future. He's already a great point guard who can do it all from finding open teammates to knocking down big shots. And even though he's got some room to fill out, he's not afraid to attack the basket. And most of the time he's finishing layups, you only see the Globetrotters make. This certainly wasn't the season the Harlem Huskies were hoping for, but Alex Wilson was a bright spot for them all year. He can stretch the floor a little bit with his ability to shoot, but where he shines most is in the pick and roll game. And then defensively, he's extremely tough in the interior. The Jefferson Jayhawks might have taken a step back this year as well, but the future is bright for John Rosado, who has a dude in Randy Johnson. Him and Mike Jones from Auburn are probably the most physically gifted underclassmen in the conference. This kid is going to be a problem in two years. I can promise you that. That also rounds out my elite. Scott, you are up. I will happily start off with Belvedere North Jr. Ethan Andre. He has game. He's a load to try to defend because he has great offensive skills. He's a good ball handler, but again, he's got that head knowledge of how to play the game. He makes good decisions. He takes good angles. Ethan Andre, I love your game, and I'm already looking forward to watching you again next season at Belvedere North. My next player, one of your big three, David Auburn guard Rob Chaney. I have so much respect for him, the way he battled back from those knee surgeries, the way he conducts himself on and off the court, the way he leads his team, and of course, he's an outstanding player. Just what you expect from an Auburn Knight under Brian Ott. Somebody who brings intensity on defense, someone who facilitates and finishes fast breaks, someone who isn't afraid to drive inside and challenge big defenders. Here's a name we haven't brought up yet, Dominic Camisso. Hananiga's 6'9 center. He gives you rim protection on defense. He gives you those highlight reel dunks on offense. He runs the floor well. I like bigs who can play and Dominic can play. And like some other guys I've mentioned before, I think he has a lot of room still for growth in his game, and he's going to realize that at the next level. Guilford's sophomore guard, Malachi Johnson, makes my Elite Eight. Malachi plays with a lot of passion, which is an asset when he channels it in the right way. He is one of those players who can be quiet for a quarter or even a half, and then he'll just explode. And when he gets on a roll, he can change the momentum of a game. Malachi is great on the fast break, passing or finishing. He's an excellent perimeter shooter. And Malachi isn't afraid to take big shots. He certainly hit some big ones this season, helping Guilford to one of the best seasons the Vikings have had in many years. The final member of my Elite Eight is Freeport's Elijah Dixon. You know, Elijah got overlooked because Freeport finished in the lower half than Nick 10. But every time I saw him, I saw a player with tremendous athletic ability. He's a, he has a very strong upper body, so when he attacks the basket, he's hard to defend. He can knock down perimeter shots. He gets after it on defense and he plays with great energy. All right, so we have a couple more awards to hand out at the small school level. Yeah, that's next, right here on Overtime. Well, the Big Northern Conference and the NUIC produced some talented players this season. We want to recognize a few of them. We start with our small school MVP for the girls. This one, a no-brainer. It's Winnebago senior Mia Brown. Brown was great when she broke into Bago's varsity lineup as a freshman, and she's continued to get better every single season. She's a first-team All-State pick. Her game is as polished as any player you'll find in the area of the state. There isn't anything she cannot do on offense, and she's very good on defense. Brown is also a very intelligent player. She understands how the game needs to be played. Congrats, Mia. You are small school girls MVP. 
where we have co-MVPs at the small school boys level. One is Eastland senior Kellen Henze. I watched him personally go off for a big game in January, but then again, he seems to play big in every game and never seems to have an off night no matter how much defenses try to contain him. He's a big time scorer, a do-it-all player, and Henze has great knowledge of how to play the game which is to be expected considering his mother was a highly successful coach at Eastland for many years. Our other co-MVP at the small school level is Rockford Lutheran point guard Walter Hill Jr. Man, is he smooth. The game just comes easy to him. He will break you down off the dribble and finish strong at the rim. He'll drop three balls on you. He is dynamite running the fast break. Nothing makes him flinch. Walter Hill Jr. is simply a winner. Well, we wrap up this episode of Overtime with our play of the season. That's one of the most amazing plays we've ever seen. This happened January 24th when Eastland hosted Lena Winslow. The game was tied at 41, which is 40 seconds to play. Had the, Eastland had the ball. Everyone knew who would take the final shot. Kellen Enzi drove, falling from his knee, picks it up off the ground and puts it in. Kellen Henze, unbelievable at the buzzer. You just don't see that every day or ever, really. Kellen Henze of Eastland makes our overtime play of the year. <laughs> well, what a season it's been, Scott. Yeah, I want to see that one more time. That was simply amazing. It's been a fun season. And again, all those players we spotlighted and the others who we didn't spotlight, hey, thanks. It's been a lot of fun covering you. Yeah, it has. We, uh, we appreciate all the... The relationships that we've built this past season, and, and especially for me, and I know for you, you've been doing a long time. Yeah. So it's and the coaches who, who accommodated us with all the Zoom interviews, it, it's been great. Yeah. Well, thanks for spending your Friday nights with us. Enjoy your weekend, everybody.